Welcome to Sorta OK Reviews, where every fandom's welcome. I'm Nathan Bedard. I'm Brad Newton. And today we're reviewing Jessica Jones, Season 2. And we do want to give a full spoiler warning for this video as we're going to go into details crucial to the plot of Jessica Jones, Season 2. So you have been warned. So what is this season about, Brad? So Jessica Jones, Season 2, it picks up right after the Defenders. So uh, Jessica is still trying to deal with Kilgrave's death because she had to end up essentially murdering him. Her friends Trish and Malcolm are trying to help her move past this by investigating IGH, which has ties to Jessica's background. So Nathan, uh, what what did you think about Jessica Jones Season 2? I think that I enjoyed this season a little bit more because of personal ties, but I will say that I think that the, uh, the beginning is a little bit slow like some of the other seasons have been. You know, it takes a little while for it to really get into its stride. But all in all, I think for, you know, a character that is not really big and doesn't have that, you know, big calling, like, I just, I find, I find it so new, new but same as though, oh, it's weird to explain it, but I, I enjoyed this season. It was, it was just fresh. It was just something I really enjoyed. I thought it was a solid season overall. Uh, I mean... Is it the best Marvel season? No. No. It, even like even compared to season one, I enjoyed season one more. Jessica Jones. That's just my personal opinion. But yeah, I think that from a story standpoint, season one is better. But from a personal standpoint, I enjoyed season two a little bit better. Yeah. So uh, let's go into what we thought was positive about this and. Like always, Kristen Ritter plays a great Jessica Jones. She's great for this role. Kristen Ritter, she has just taken this role. Like, I, I, the, the episode could be so boring, but I just want to see her investigate. I, she's so good at it. and She's good at her character. She's so yeah. good at her character, and I just want to see her take this character on just so many journeys and so many investigations. Like... She she hasn't really had any huge huge roles like this is her big thing and she just she just nails it she just she can be that charismatic badass but then same time just be that drunk yeah you she know. shows that conflict like she she tries to pretend pretend that she doesn't care but she really does and she does it in a way that's not annoying at all mm -hmm. so uh, next positive moving on that I wanted to bring up to me was the Kilgrave cameo I was missing Kilgrave during the season I thought I think he's one of the best Marvel villains of the him and Kingpin are up there for the Marvel shows the best villain and then so he had that cameo I, I towards the end of the season where he was in Jessica's head and uh, David Tennant who plays Kilgrave is just phenomenal yeah I really I was a little worried because when I heard Kilgrave was going to be in the season I thought okay are they going to be like okay we can't do this without our main guy he was you know really popped it first season off uh, I was a little worried about that I was like they're going to rely on him but like he really didn't come into like what the last yeah he was only in a couple of episodes no he was the, only in one episode he was only in like one episode and mm -hmm. he, it really worked so well just when when she has that moment where she's like I've done something really bad and the reason for that he comes right back and he's just like bravo because yeah I'm ties, proud of you it ties back to Jessica yeah. killing killing him and Kill, he Kilgrave, killed another yeah. person and I just Oh, I, I I loved it. I'm like, this is an instant where they did a, a cameo of a character that's dead very very well. Uh, yeah. And uh, the next next positive that was a standout for me was that flashback episode. I had so much fun watching that episode where we got to see a little bit of Jessica's origins, her growing up in her early twenties with Trish. Yeah, it, it like and it's sort of because like you see that like okay. It adds a lot to both Jessica and Trish because you you wonder you're like okay, Jessica you know she's a really heavy you know alcoholic she has these powers, but she's so good at investigating and you see that but before all that happened like she even when she had her powers like she wanted to stay in school study doing good she wanted a good life and it also adds a lot to Trish's character because you see that like Trish is so good right now. But she had that typical star fandom thing where she got caught up in the popularity, the money, the drugs. And it just shows you why these two got so close together and what brought them together as sisters. Yeah, I didn't realize like how famous Trish's character was. Like she, I don't think her, her pop career ever took off. 
but like she had like a famous pop song. She was a child star. It was cray cray. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely want it. But uh, her her whole story arc, uh, and it's echoed in the future too. Is like when Trish and Jessica aren't together, things don't go well. When they're not communicating with each other, things they both stray off their paths. So they need together. They're stronger. So that was the theme of that episode, which I really enjoyed. And you know the season had to do a lot with mothers and that also shows you why Jessica and them don't really like Trish's mom because it's like you're seeing Trish go through all this and it's like where's her mother through all this why isn't she no her mother only cares about her brand money name all that stuff Mm -hmm. and that adds to that too yeah and then so the main focus of the season which was the great highlight was Jessica learning that her mother was alive so she thought her mother died in the car accident 15 years ago but it turns out she's been alive this whole time. Yep, and I I gotta say she the 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 the, the actress that plays the mom, mm-hmm. she is phenomenal. Like Alyssa is her name in the show, but I don't know the actress's name. She oh gosh, like you, you see that she went through something dramatic, and then like she's been brought back, and like clearly there's something wrong. But when she's on screen, you, you're frightened by her. You want Jessica and them to work it out, but you know that there's something wrong with this woman, and it, it, she is intimidating. And I think that that's when the mom comes back, and that's when the season really it really vamps up and it really adds a lot because you see Jessica trying so hard, like you know, for and like that's that's when it clicked with me because I have a personal tie with us uh, with the situ with the situation. Like, when you lose a family member, it's like, they're gone forever. But when you get them back, you don't want to go to that feeling again of having, of losing them. And even though what she was, she was killing, murdering innocent people, she was like, she was just was trying every which way to shed some light on it. Like, she it wasn't her fault. It was this, it was this asshole who, it, who tried to, like, you know, was trying to have a god complex and trying these experiments and stuff well, like this. Do you think that Carl, the name of the scientist you're talking about, do you think he was the bad guy of this show, of this season? No, no, and that's the problem, is like, you know, she looked at him as like, oh, he's his bad, and which it was, it really, really was, Mm -hmm. but I do understood him, like, I mean, at the end of the day, was what he did was wrong? Yes, Mm -hmm. but he saved, he saved her mother, like, he saved her, like, he He saved Jessica, too. Did it work out in the way he wanted to? No, but that's the point of science, and like, I think that's where, like, you know, I understood his fact. Like, yes, it was wrong, and like some of the things he can't amend for. But but he actually did try. He like he really he didn't go down that road of like continuing these horrible. No, he stopped and. Like I don't think he was a terrible, terrible human being. No, he really wasn't. But because he ends up, you know, marrying Jessica's mom, Carl and Alyssa get married, and they live together for twelve years. So, it's there's no real villain in this in this season there's like all kind of shades of gray like there's what they're doing definitely wrong yeah but you understand jessica's motivation she wants to try to help her mom no matter what but the the bad guy it, i do think is the mom because you know she and that actually adds a lot like it actually turns out that her mom adds a lot to her backstory as well as we find out that jessica had a boyfriend um that wanted to open up a club uh called alias which mm-hmm. later becomes alias investigations and also, she, he, he brings her somewhat down a bad path. Though they begin to steal, and you know he's not really in the, the the nicest organizations and groups and stuff like that. Uh, but then that's where she leads to to get her jacket. She steals it, but and then you know her mom's around at that time. And that's when she first sneaks out, and you find out that oh, th- that's why he's not there. She kills him, and it's like. Yeah, that revelation was pretty sad in the show. And, you know, she she he, he was the reason that kept her pretty happy. And, you know, knowing that your mom, while you're trying to love her, took some away some of your happiness, it's, it's, it's a hard conflict to go through. Yeah, so, like, all Jessica had at that time was Trish because her and Trish were fighting at the time. Jessica mm-hmm. had lost her entire family. Her and Trish were fighting, so all she had was her boyfriend at the time. And then the mom thinks... And that was just a little side note, too, that I want to discuss. Do you think that he was actually going to try to use Jessica to steal stuff, or do you think he was just lying to them to get him to go away? I think he was lying. I Like I said, I think he was just one of those scientists where he just, he had this idea, and he had this theory, and he wanted it to work, and 
it somewhat did, but there were some kinks, and he just wanted to keep fixing it. He just mm-hmm. wanted his work to keep, because I mean, c- clearly later on when he when he does it, he's not doing it for money. She's not paying him. He's, he just wants his science to to wants, work. He wants a legacy. He wants a legacy. Yep. Okay, so those are the positives, and you know that's the plot, the positives. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely some negatives going into this season. Yep, definitely some negatives. Um, like I said, I think that the beginning of the season is kind of slow. Um, it, it feels like some some subplots could have been taken out, didn't need to be there, and, and you know the specifically the the Hogarth plot with Hogarth. Her life. She um, Hogarth is such an amazing character too. Mm-hmm. I think that that's what makes it not absolutely ruin this season is because even though her plot is somewhat pointless, when she's acting, it's amazing. When she go when she shows when she's doing her job as a lawyer, it's 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 so powerful. It's so her acting ability is just really nice and her 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 storyline has a good payoff at the end it really shows her power but it just never connects back to igh in the main storyline doesn't line. connect and and a lot of her scenes were uh, some of her scenes like the the scene where she's just letting loose and doing drugs and all that so it's just it was mm-hmm. why did this need to be here why do we need to see this yeah I have a theory that the Marvel Netflix shows should be a few episodes less just to get rid of these subplots that most people don't like these subplots. But um, another another thing that I found annoying was just at the end, Trisha's character. I mean, she just got so ridiculous I, at the end. I don't know about at the end. More or less, I, I found her just slightly annoying towards the beginning. Uh, just cause like, you know, she, I understood that like, you know, she has her friend Jessica who has these powers that could really make a difference and she's not doing that where she could, she, and she has all these people around here who are making these differences while by just being human and she's just not getting this opportunity, but it's just like, you, she also sees the, the, the traumatic and the problems that Jessica has to deal with and it's not easy mm-hmm. and she's just she has a good life and she's trying to ruin that to be selfish for her to try and, and you know acquire her her needs well she wants two things aside from the power she wanted to be like a legit like investigative reporter that's mm-hmm. why she was in, gonna engage the guy she was dating at the beginning mm-hmm. she couldn't get that so then she moved on to something else and she thought okay Jessica's had these powers her whole life that she's never had she's like okay maybe I could get some powers of my own so I get her motivation. It's just her way of going about it. Like, she knows she's an addict. She started using um, the inhaler. And then yep. she literally gets to the point to me when it gets super annoying is when she knocks out Malcolm and locks him in the trunk just to get to that scientist guy. I'm like, what are you doing, Trish? Yeah, she, yeah, she's, it's just like, it's like, okay, get, you can help it. She could help. She could become, you know, she could have worked with Jessica and become a part of her, her team. And, She's just going at it as like a very selfish way, and and yeah, she's just showing that she wasn't like she's an addict, and she just she can't stop, and you know she's gonna she's gonna do anything she can to get her way, and mm-hmm. it shows she's she you know you see she's a little bit of a spoiled brat in the beginning, and that shows here, and yeah, and like the end, she she ends up killing uh, her mother. I understood that though. Because it's like I think that the cops would have ended up coming in and um, you know shooting her anyways. I think personally, but I agree. I'm like on the opposite side of that. Like I get that it's setting up conflict for the next season. Yeah, and that they're never gonna get back together. But at the same time, like Jessica's line, I think she says it could have been like, why did it have to be you? Like she can never look at Trisha sh- the same way now because she's like, I'm always gonna see you as the person that killed my mother now. Yeah, and. And I, I do I do agree with the fact too because also Trish doesn't understand the fact of what Jessica's going through like Lu, like Trish has her mom mm-hmm. you know while she might not be the best she has her mom and mm-hmm. and her mom might have been doing bad things and like Jessica's trying her best to stop that and technically they do she gives herself up she's ready to give herself up but it's just like she does Trish just doesn't understand that like you know once they're gone they're gone yeah. And then the last thing, to me, this wasn't really a negative, wasn't really positive. I just wanted to bring up Malcolm's character. Because I really like Malcolm's character at first, and then to the end, I don't know, towards the end, like, I get his motivation, but I don't necessarily agree with his choice. Yeah, I really liked it because, like, you know, you see through the whole season that he he's good at what he's, he's doing. He's working his butt off. Like, he was an addict, not mainly by himself. You know, Kilgrave had some influence, but, you know... 
he's he's working his butt off to try to help Jessica, and Jessica's not giving him any, you know, recollection or any approval. And it's it's it is kind of like I I agree with him. Like he's like I'm good at what I'm doing. I'm I'm helping you, and keeping you up afloat. But you're not you're not acknowledging me. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm done. So I agree with that. And like I, I don't know. I, I I think I disagree. I I, I like that aspect of him. And also like he kind of does have a little bit of a secret addiction too. Mm-hmm. Later we find out. Um, yeah. But um, yeah. No. I actually I I enjoyed it because I think his character can do a lot more. And well, I liked his character until like the last two episodes when he becomes like a suit and tie guy. I don't know. Like I, I don't mind him like trying to take the initiative, but. Him going with the other private investigator, I'm like, okay. I don't know. I think it made sense to me. I I liked it. Mm-hmm. And then also Jessica had it, it, the season ends with Jessica and her new boyfriend and his son, and so which I I thought was nice for her to have somebody now that Trish and Malcolm are out of her lives. Yeah, that was a that was a really like that was another slub. Uh, <laughs> sorry, subplot. Mm-hmm. That I think really fit. It wasn't overbearing. It wasn't really like touched upon every single time. It was just suddenly, th- like you know, in in there, but quick and done. Like and and it led to like okay, yeah, like j- Jessica. She's been sad her whole life because she keeps letting herself. So she's like, well, let me try being happy for once. Mm-hmm. And I really, I really like the uh, the ending because now it's like okay, she's now now she's probably gonna show up season three. Things are gonna be going pretty well. Mm-hmm. What's gonna go wrong? And the last thing that I found surprising is there was no mention of Defenders in this. Like, this big storyline just happened, and, you know, Daredevil's dead, and so, I mean, not, it's never mentioned. Yeah, I mean, like, I think there's, like, subtle hints, like, okay, yeah, we know you're pow- like you're a superhuman, like, you're not normal. Um, but, yeah, like, she was part of this group, like, why, like, she doesn't talk about Luke Cage or Daredevil or, or Danny or um, any of them, mm-hmm. and... It's just like she could have like she she's technically somewhat friends with all of them now. I mean they fought together. I mean yeah, Daredevil's supposed to be dead now, so it's understandable. That's understandable. I don't know what Luke yeah Luke Cage could have really done for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Danny like I mean Danny had some money. I felt like he could have made she could have shoot he could have he he knows a lot of probably hiding spots. He could have probably mm-hmm. hid her mother or something. I just feel like you know now that they've they got these been characters connected, connect, more. yeah mm-hmm. why not use them you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you have anything else you want to discuss? Are you ready to go into uh, a re- Are you ready to go into re- reviews? No, nope, I think I'm ready to go into the review. I think or the rating. Sorry. Yeah, I think I'm ready to go into the review. Okay. So you want to go through our ratings? Okay. So with our ratings, we, with sort of okay, which is a C, sort of good, which is a B, sort of spectacular, which is an A, and then sort of perfect, which is an A plus, perfect, go. Buy it on Blu-ray. We loved it. Mm. The whole shebang. Then we have sort of bad, which is a D, and it's sort of awful, which is an F. Me, me personally, I'm gonna give this rating a sort of spectacular, just because I had a personal connection with this season um, that just that that kept me tied in. Even though it was a little slow, I was just tied in, and I just felt every moment with Jessica. I just, I, 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 I enjoyed it so much, and I want to see more of her investigating i want to see more of her character i yeah. I love her character and I, I i just i had fun with this season i think i finished it in like two or three days mm-hmm. i really enjoyed it yeah uh i'm gonna say it's sort of good i'm i'm gonna give it a b rating for me like i didn't again i don't think it was as strong as the first season i think it was lacking uh, Kilgrave. it was lacking Kilgrave as as the great standout villain for me um but i did enjoy it like there wasn't at any point that I thought was I was bored with it. I watched about three episodes a day. It took me about four days to finish it. So, yeah, I mean, it's sort of good. Yep. I think next, what, we have uh, Luke Cage Season 2? I mean, I believe, I believe that comes out in June. All right, so expect that review coming around that time, too. But that's going to do it for our Jessica Jones Season 2 review. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you liked it. And we, uh, we hope you like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh... And yeah, you could subscribe over there and then there'll be a video up right here. So So we hope you have a good day. Thank you.